Hello, so welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be painting in Battersea Park, which is about five minutes on the bike, so I'm quite lucky to live close to it. So remember to subscribe and let's go there. So as you can see, I've docked my bike and now I'm going to go into the park and try and find my friend Patrick, who is my studio mate, who's going to be painting with me. So as you can see, we're just right next to the park. And today I'm going to be painting in a place called the Old English Garden which I've never painted in before. I'm always discovering new places here and so I'm excited to see how this place is. So I think this is it here, the old English garden. No, I've never been here before. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this is the first first time here in the English garden. <laughs> I start by drawing in the general shapes of the composition. I then mass in the big value shapes, use some very thin down paint which I rub in with a tissue. I then mix paint for the dark areas and put this down. I often find it's easier, especially when painting Ala Prima, to paint the dark areas down first, as it's quite hard to paint a really dark dark on top of wet paint. Also keeping the shadows thin helps the shadows recede because if you paint thick shadows and there's brush marks and brush strokes within the shadow, that's gonna pick up some of the light. And in general, you want to save the brushwork and the thick paint for the lights as that's generally where you want the viewer's eye to go as in nature our eyes are naturally drawn to the areas in light. Obviously depending on what you're painting the composition sometimes you can get really nice detail within the shadows especially if there's a lot of reflected light in the shadow if it's a light object but with this fountain I'm going to try and keep the shadows quite dark and pick up the detail and the form in the half tones and put in some more impasto brushwork in the lights and the highlights. So one of my top tips for painting reflections in the water is to map out a shadow pattern quite early on and to paint these dark areas down first. By doing this, I make certain that all the ripples in the water are coherent to one another. As I paint, the water's gonna move, the wind's gonna blow across the water, the ripples are gonna change and it can be very frustrating trying to chase all the ripples and all the movement in the water once I've got a lot of paint down on that area of the canvas as it's hard to paint crisp, clear shadows on top of wet paint. I can then go in with the lighter paint to pick up some of the highlights of the sky in the water and I can create a really dramatic contrast which makes water such a captivating subject. As I paint the trees behind the fountain I'm keeping some of that light yellowy green tone that I put down 
right at the start showing through. This gives the trees that real luminosity that you get as the sunlight hits into the leaves. And often I find that by using oil paint almost like you'd use watercolour by applying a thin wash over a light surface, this can give the paint a much more vibrant and bright appearance as often adding white to a mix will actually make the mix a bit more dull and a bit greyer. So if you can avoid adding white to the mix and instead make the paint appear light by thinly glazing it over the canvas, the transparency of the oil paint will create a bright, colourful and vibrant appearance. So when I paint the water spraying up out of the fountain, I try and paint it quite soft and then pick out some even lighter bits sort of in the middle of this soft light shape that I've painted. This gives the water that sort of spraying, moving effect. So I hope you enjoyed that video of me painting the old English garden here in Battersea Park. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. You can also follow me on Instagram at George Frederick Thomas. Thanks for watching. Take care.